So I was listening on the train ride in today uh, to the Low Post podcast, Zach Lowe's ESPN, uh, or Zach Lowe of ESPN's podcast. Uh, he was talking with Jeff Van Gundy on it. Um, they were talking about Memphis, who right now is probably the favorite in the Western Conference. They've had the best combination of past success, uh, current excellent play, all of those things. Like, obviously, a lot of people are going to be like, if I, if I ask just random people on the street, like, hey, who do you think is going to win the West? They'd probably be like, well, the Warriors. But the Warriors haven't played well enough this season to really warrant that right now. I mean, the Warriors have a negative point differential on the year. Uh, the best point differential in the league uh, or in the Western Conference is Memphis. They're second in the league behind the Celtics. Uh, they're they're winning every game by an average of six points. And by the way, they've also won 10 in a row. They are cooking right now. And Zach said, you know, they probably don't need to make a trade. It doesn't seem like they think they need to make a trade with the deadline coming here in about three weeks. Um, but if they did, maybe they could move something for a Kyle Kuzma and and he could be their seventh guy. And he said that. And I was like, hold on. Rewind, rewind, rewind. Give me give me back 30 seconds. What team are we talking Okay, we are talking about Memphis. I didn't hear that right. Trade for Kuzma. And he could be their, their seventh guy? And it was at that point, Anthony, I realized just how far the Wizards are away. Because as of late, Kyle Kuzma's been the Wizards' number one guy. Now, granted, some of that is positional and realistically is... Kuz, yeah, would he be in the lineup for them if if he did get traded to Memphis, right? He'd be on the floor to finish games for them. Uh, the way they start their lineups is, or their their team is to get Jaron Jackson the third as a four man with Steven Adams playing some minutes at center, and that just makes life a little bit easier for Jaron Jackson. Um, it does some things for their offense. It does some things for their rotation, but realistically you probably would close with Jaron Jackson at center and then Kyle Kuzma as their four with John Morant, Desmond Bain and and Aaron Brooks. Like they would they would figure out how to get Kuz on the floor, better spacing, he's a good enough defender. Um you don't necessarily want Adams on the floor where teams can attack him. All the all this you know, he's more switchable Kuz is, all that kind of stuff. By the way, how about this for a stat? Um, on Jaron Jackson Jr., they have, Zach said this in the podcast. He is currently blocking when he is on the floor 11% of all two-point shots. And how many fouls is he drawing, though? A million. He's fouling <laughs> way too much. <laughs> that dude fouls out like once every six <laughs> games. Um, but if he, can, if he can get that under control, obviously that would be... Major, but like his his per thirty six minute numbers, he's averaging like four and a half blocks every thirty six minutes. Yeah, and he is literally. And now this this would be the highest in NBA history, which is a meaningless stat in a lot of ways because one they didn't keep blocks in, uh, when like Wilt and Bill Russell played, uh, and they would own every block record known to man. And two, so there's such a fewer percentage of two point shots now. Like it was harder to block a high percentage of two point shots in the nineties because so many teams took mid range jumpers. Now most of your your lay, your two point shots are like layups, so they're more predictable in terms of or more blockable. Where a lot of teams are taking a lot higher percentage of threes, or every team is taking a lot higher percentage of threes. But still, every every one of every ten two point shots taken against the Memphis Grizzlies when Jaron Jackson is on the floor, he blocks. That's nuts. But the larger point here for Washington on their side of it is if you're that far away where other teams that are truly championship caliber are looking to bring maybe your best player this year off the bench. Because, like, obviously, Jaw Jaw's their, their starting point guard. He's not going anywhere. Uh, Desmond Bain and Aaron Brooks are their wings. And then Triple J... And Steve Adams, what, who's who's going to the bench? Like he's a better player than Aaron Brooks, but matchup wise, intensity wise, chemistry wise, rotation wise, like you're better off bringing Kuz off the bench 
if you're a team like Memphis. And having him lead your second unit with Tyus Jones, who, by the way, is a starting point guard on almost every other NBA team. So it's the kind of thing where if you're Washington, like, are you willing to take that hard look in the mirror and say, well, if that's our reality, we need to we need to kickstart things. We need to make serious moves. Or are you saying that's kind of a one-off? We think that if we add, we can compete with teams like that. And this is the, the question that they have to ultimately ask. And by the way, the first question Washington needs to ask before all of that, that whether they're good or not, whether they can get better, is do they actually think they can re-sign Kyle Kuzma? Um, and Shams Charanya of The Athletic and Josh Robbins, the local uh, Wizards beat guy for The Athletic, put out a story not too long ago that, like, we're talking two hours ago, that uh, a bunch of Western Conference teams are ex- or have started to reach out to the Wizards on Rui, and they've got kind of this, obviously, swell at forward where Kuz is the starter, and Denny is is coming off the bench, and, and then Rui is also coming off the bench. I mean, it depends on the night. Those guys are, you know, Denny sometimes starting, sometimes coming off the bench. But the point is, like, Kuz is, is a natural foreman. That's Rui's preferred position, and it's easier for Denny and Kuz to play together. So Rui, and by the way, who's also a pending free agent, is on is potentially on the block. And maybe that is the right move. But Rui is going to be way easier to sign in the offseason than Kuz. And you have to ask yourself, realistically, can we re-sign Kyle Kuzma? And that starts with, financially, can you afford it? The answer is, yes. uh, It's going to hurt, but you can. But he's also an unrestricted free agent. So is he going to want to sign here? Is He's thoroughly enjoyed his time by all accounts, but is Kyle Kuzma going to look at what the Wizards are building as someone who, by the way, is a little bit older than you think? It's not like he's 22. He's been around for a, 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 a few years. Kuz is 27. He's won a championship. He knows what that feels like. He knows what that kind of roster looks like. He knows what it takes. He turns 28 in July. Is he going to sign a four-year deal here? That coincides with the four years that Bradley Beal has left and know that his fortune is tied to a guy that he hasn't seen on the floor a whole lot recently. I don't, if I was Kuz and I could get pretty close to the same money somewhere else, I wouldn't sign here. And so, realistically, if you're the Wizards, all discussions about what you could build around Kuz, Porzingis, and Beal need to start with a reality check that that might not be possible because one of those guys, or frankly two, Porzingis could just as easily, and I think KP is much more likely to stay than Kuz is. And obviously they're having these discussions and, you know, Kuz has an agent and Porzingis has an agent, all that. Porzingis has a $36 million player option for next year. Um, He also could opt out and become an unrestricted free agent as well. But... If if you're the Wizards, if you're Tommy Shepard, and really, honestly, it's not even Tommy, it's Ted. If you're Ted Leonsis, do you have the courage to look in the mirror and admit to yourself, I don't know that we can do this. Forget whether it's a good idea. And we can debate that next. 301-230-0980. What would you like the Wizards to do as we sit three weeks from the trade deadline? 301-230-0980. But the question that needs to be asked first is can they? Because if the answer is no, or you think it's even 50-50, you need to trade Coos. Because you cannot, considering the hole that you've boxed yourself in with Bradley Beal, let him walk for nothing. Sinful. On NBA terms. If, uh... That's what you get.